Hello, uh, welcome to the webinar, um, Art of Storytelling, Top 5 Tips for Telling the Story of Your Business or Your Calling with Authenticity to Attract More Clients. I decided later I should have called this Writing the Soul of Your Business, um, but we'll have to go with this long name for now. Welcome to the webinar. So what I'm going to do is talk for about 50 minutes and then do about 10 minutes for questioning, um, but feel free to type in your questions as we go along. I'm actually not going to unmute us for the purposes of this webinar um, because it makes it easier. So there's a place there for you to type in questions. I've tested this out myself and I'll get, I also had questions emailed to me by people who were not able to attend the webinar. So I have those in written form and I will answer them. Okay, so I'm trying to get this volume down a little bit on the music. Worked, it worked when I was practicing, <laughs> so I just have to talk over it. Um, so again, welcome to Art of Storytelling's the top five tips for telling the story of your business or your calling with authenticity to attract more clients. Again, I'm going to speak for 50 minutes and there will be 10 minutes for questions at the end. And you're to type your questions in. I'm not going to unmute us for this webinar. So first, I'm going to introduce Art of Storytelling and my path towards authentic growth, um, just because in that will be some information for you guys on how you might grow your own business. Okay, so um, some of you have worked before. I'm seeing new names as well, so I'll, I'll start my story from the beginning. My name is Caroline Allen, and I used to be a journalist, and I worked in London and Tokyo. Um, I was a newsroom journalist and covered uh, feature articles mostly and worked both as a journalist, reporter, copy editor, editor, the whole shebang. I was at the Financial Times in London when I was hit by a very strong calling to not be a journalist anymore and as most of us know we can have the calling to not be something and not know what the next stage is, right? So it took me a while to figure it out and I realized, well, through a lot of therapy and coaching that it was uh, novel writing and visual art was the way I wanted to go. Well, now I don't know about anybody else on this webinar right now, but when you come to the realization that you want to write novels and do visual art, um, all the fear comes up around money and how do you possibly make a living wanting to do that kind of work, right? Um, and that goes back generations through our parents, through the Great Depression. Um, there's a lot of fear around realizing that kind of artistic passion into a money-making endeavor. So that's why I'm telling you my story because I know it resonates with many people when it comes to thinking how do I succeed in my business doing what I love because I fear what I love can't possibly make me money believe me um, I can really resonate with this okay so um, uh, what happened was that I just had started uh, writing novels with the help of a therapist I needed a lot of therapy to even allow myself to write novels and um, I started teaching an extension program class in Seattle at a college and it didn't make enough money to survive so I was also freelancing as a journalist during the day not happy I have to say at this stage in my life I was confused and not happy so um, I'm teaching this class it's growing word of mouth so many more people are coming to the class again I think I mean I made so little money teaching it um, it barely paid even one bill or two bills, I think. At any rate, so of course I'm just thinking, what am I doing? You know, this cannot lead to anything financially viable. And then after a few years, one of the students came up to me. I'm going to call her Martha. Um, Martha came up to me because she likes her privacy. So after the class, after one of the classes, and asked me to coach her one-on-one. -on -one. And I said, absolutely not <laughs> not going to become somebody else's coach 
I am a writer of novels, and I'm not going to help other people write their books. So, of course, in the hero's journey, they call that refusal of the call, right? So I did a big refusal of the call, labored along for another three months, ran into her at a party on the beach in Seattle, and the light was shining on her in such a way that I just had this epiphany that I should coach her. And so I just went up to her. She was very upset with me, so it took some finagling. Um, and I said, yes, okay, let's do it. She had actually had a very traumatic life. Um, and I knew it was going to be emotionally difficult. And that was another reason I said no. But anyway, after saying yes to Martha, within six weeks, I just put it out to the classes that I had taught past and present that I was now coaching on one-on-one. -on -one. Within six weeks, I could quit everything because my coaching client base was filled um, within six weeks. I mean, it was a humble lifestyle, but it was unbelievable because I'd never even heard of a writing coach at that point. This was about 15 to 20 years ago. I didn't even know what it meant to be a writing coach. I didn't even know <laughs> anything. So um, that is the story of how it evolved. Now, what we're going to talk about during this session is both for people who already have their small businesses and how to write the story of that business and for people who have a calling to do something, create a business from it, but they don't know what kind of business and they don't know how they could possibly make money from it. So um, it took me years to understand what I offer as this teacher coach that other people um, as coaches don't offer. What was unique about me? Why was this working? And everything we're going to do today surrounds a lot of the principles step by step that I went through to figure out what I had to offer, why it was different, to align with it, and to therefore attract more clients. So only, and this has been years, and only recently did I realize what I really, really offer people is I tell them that they are completely okay as they are. Um, that's just who I am. It's who I have been since I was a little girl. I don't want people to be like me, and I don't want them to be like other people. I just think people are completely fine, just exactly who they are. And in every realm of my coaching, that w that's what keeps coming up and why people come to me. No, your story is perfect just as it is. Just write it down. Your tale is epic just as it is. Just write it down. Um, so perhaps other coaches bring something else to the table. That's what I tend to bring to the table. It's taken me years to get to that point. And that becomes important in this webinar. It becomes important in what I'm going to show you coming up. Um, because even putting that paragraph into the story you're going to write, what Art of Storytelling offers is, uh, you know, validation for each of the clients in their innate creative power in the power of their story. And I emailed everyone Emily's story so you could try to get an idea of it. If you haven't read it yet, please read it after the webinar. And that's what I do. I tend to write the article, the story about one of my clients, and I insert what it is that is that I truly, in my soul, offer. I've always offered it. So my path has been like this. I'm trying to figure out what it even means to be a writing coach so that I can build my business and get more people. And I start to see, throughout my career, I have been very interested in helping people who don't have a voice get a voice. So as a journalist, I helped the abused. I, I wrote stories about the abused, the handicapped. I was always there for people whose voices could not be heard. Um, animal rights, things like that. And so I started to understand, oh, that's what I do. I really help people express their voice. It's already there. It's authentic. I'm just helping people express it into the world. Okay, so let's go on here. So what then happened was... Um, I read The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. 
And in it, there's a section called, How Can I Help? And I, this permeates our lesson for today, so I want to talk about it first and show you throughout the lesson how it fits. So I got to a place with my coaching where I was really fed up, and I've worked with some of you people uh, who are either online now or are going to be listening to this afterwards. Um, and most people know how fed up I got <laughs> because I wanted my books published. See, even, even later, even years after I refused the call, I was still getting a little fed up. And I read this principle in The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, How Can I Help? And I thought, yeah, that's all I do. And if you're a woman and you're listening to this, you may have the same reaction. That's all I do. I help and help and help. When does it ever end? But it's a misunderstanding of that principle. And when I finally understood the principle, it has just been bing, 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 bing. What it means is when I'm aligned with what I truly give, how can I help means not only what I give, but the people I attract are exactly what I need at that moment. And so purely that it doesn't feel like work. And I'm going to give you very specific examples. Right now, I have a client in Zurich who's writing a book about um, the expat lifestyle. She's lived, she's Greek, she's living in Zurich, she's lived in the U.S. and Vienna and all over the, all over the world. And she's writing this nonfiction book. Very, very smart woman. And um, I happen to be writing two novels that are expat novels, um, Air and Fire. So every session when I'm helping her, she gives me information for the next chapter of writing Fire. So this is what I am trying to explain about this co-creative alignment that can happen. Um, if you can see it, the giving, in the way that the giving gives back to you. And I am no longer annoyed or uh, upset at all about the coaching. It feeds every side of me. So, for example, another client came right after I aligned with this, How Can I Help It? I really recommend getting this book. I mean, I'll be very honest. I have never really been into Deepak Chopra, but for some reason this book really spoke to me. So, um... Another example is I just got a client who is 13 years old and she's being nurtured for writing short stories that she's leading into a novel. I've never worked with a child before so it's all new to me but it is healing my 13 year old who was not nurtured as a writer or artist and it's this profound loop of healing that comes back to me. And so that's what we're going to do today. It's an alignment um, of what it is I organically give to the world. Just every day of my life I've organically given it. So aligned that the people who come to you are organically giving right back to you and it becomes a cycle of I have so much energy now that I can do seven projects at once. Um, Anyway, it's amazing fix of energy. Um, so, okay, so how can I help is going to be crucial to this. And a lot of you listening might think, well, it took you years to figure out your true alignment with what you give. Um, how can I do it more quickly, right? <laughs> so hopefully this storytelling process gets, us, gets you to the place that it took me years to get to. Okay, so next slide. Okay, here are the top five tips. So what I'm going to do here is I'm both very metaphysical and into the soul of things, and I'm also very practical. I believe you should get a story finished like the one I emailed to you, so please do read that when you get a chance, um, or a book published. So I believe both in really being aligned spiritually and metaphysically, with what you have to offer, but I also believe in this web core, this webinar, you can get, we can get a practical story out of this. So you're going to see we go back and forth between very practical and somewhat woo-woo, <laughs> which is me. Okay, so here we go. Um, we're going to talk about both practically if you already own a business or uh, more metaphysically if you're thinking of your calling. So identify your story. Um, sorry, let me just name the top five tips, and in the next slide we go through them. Sorry, 
identify your story. This is where we come up with a very specific story like the Emily's story that I sent to you. And I'm going to show you how to identify it. A very specific story related to your work or your, your calling. And we're going to explore who you've truly helped in your career and how, and how they have helped you. Then we're going to explore the story, and this is where we go very practical. We answer who, what, when, where, why, and how. We just get very practical on the story because it's in the, the devil is in the details. The more we look at the details, the more we find our soulful truth. You're going to tell your story, who already knows your story and why. Basically, we're going to talk about the story in terms of, have you already told that story many times? The Martha story I just told you, I probably told a thousand times at dinner parties across the world and to everyone I know. So it's a, what, when we talk about tell your story, it is story, a story actually you've already told. And there, there's a reason you keep telling it. We'll get to that. Write your story, and then we're going to talk about writing your story down and how to do it for the purposes of this webinar because we have limited time. Um, that's mostly what the four-week uh, e-course that starts in July will look at. Very much one-on-one -on -one help with writing your story down. But we will talk about it in overview today. And then share your story. And just looking at how you might use it in different ways to project out into the world who you are and in so doing, magnetize the clients to you. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Identify your story. This is number one. Um, this is what I recommend in all my writing classes, be it for memoir or fiction writing or screenwriting. I, I always say pick three events or situations from your past. Um, in this situation, it's career related, it's calling related, where you felt you've truly helped someone. So I'm going to give you an example. Um, I think back to my past as a journalist, and I think back, like if I was just trying to figure out my calling, let's say, I would think back beyond the writing coaching, way to any work I've ever done where I felt I, it was truly important and magical. And what comes up for me was that I wrote a travel article. Two articles come up for me, actually. One that I wrote about a Bechak driver in Indonesia who lived in his wheeled rickshaw. Um, and he kept his clothes under the seat, and that was his closet, and his bed was on the seat. and it was giving him a voice into the world, you know, globally giving him a voice. And working class people in developing countries, he was in Indonesia, Jogjakarta in Jogjakarta, and giving someone a voice like that to me is so profoundly important. And then the second article that comes to me is I wrote about a poetry workshops done in juvenile detention in Seattle. And again, look at that, uh, about giving voice to these 12-year-old kids who didn't really have a voice out into the world. So you see what I mean? Even those two coming up to me and filling my heart, I know I did good then. I know I did good. And so I would start to look at those as going, okay, so my calling is around people and their voice, right? That would be the beginning. So I'm telling that to you if you're trying to figure out your calling and how that might align with work that you might want to do. If you already own a business, I would recommend picking something within your business. And if you read Emily's story, um, you, would, you will see that I picked working with Emily and helping her write a sci-fi novel as a situation where I truly felt I was helpful. I say pick three events because you, you would write them out in summary, and that's the third bullet point. Write those events down in summary form, and you would just look at them in summary form. And you would, you would look at how they're tied together, which one speaks to the very core of who you are and what you offer. All three of them might, and why. Just ask yourself why. 
what is going on in each one of these. And I will tell you, too, with the um, kids in poetry, the kids in juvie writing poetry, it was the beginning of me understanding that my voice as a poetic novelist, I wanted that out into the world, too. So each one will have a core truth core to who you are and what you give the world. I have to tell you, this makes me so passionate. I'm almost getting teary-eyed <laughs> as I do this webinar. Wow. I'm just so passionate about finding this, helping people find this and see this in themselves and align with it and doors just blow open. Okay, so bullet point two I want to talk about, being specific. Um, you're going to pick one specific way that you work together. Don't generalize. So Let's say you're a landscaper. I did some landscaping at um, this park once. Uh, every year I do landscaping at this park. You want to be really specific. You want to name the flowers. You want to name the trees. You want to talk about what kind of landscaping you did and how you arranged them and what it means to you. The more specific you are, the more you will find yourself there. Um, so when you're picking the three events and you're writing them in summary form, you want to be as specific as possible. I helped Emily with a sci-fi fantasy novel, not just a book. Her imagination was wild and raucous. And what I find, and that's in the article that you'll read, and what I find really interesting is now I'm having profound science fiction calling myself. So even our future can be found deep in these past stories or these current stories. Okay, so when the webinar is finished, that is my first recommenda recommendation, is to sit down, pick three events or situations where you've really helped someone, be specific about the specific way you work together, don't generalize, you'll lose it in the generalization. It's in the details that you'll find yourself. Write the three events down in summary form. Which one? Then you're going to have to choose one to write. Um, so you would end up choosing one of these stories to actually then follow some of the stuff we're going to talk about next. Like I had to choose Emily over Martha. And really the reason, and we're going to talk about this later, the reason I chose Emily was because um, she was willing to be very public. Um, I asked permission, and I know Martha was a little more guarded, and rightfully so. I honor everybody's privacy. So you're going to pick one of your stories. You're going to write them down. You're going to pick one. Okay, we're going on. Moving forward. Okay. Again, the devil is in the details. We are going to explore your story. We're going to get the name of the person. Okay, let me start back up a little bit here. There are privacy issues most of the time when we work with clients. So you have to, if you choose the story, go to the client directly, go to the person directly. If it's from a past experience, um, you just figure out privacy around it and you honor it. So if every single one of your clients needs privacy, then you might have to create a fictitious amalgam of different clients and note that in the storytelling. Note, you know, the names and places and situations have been changed for the privacy of the people involved. But I would still recommend writing a story to this level of detail because that's what really pulls in readers and really it magnetizes clients, okay? So you're going to get very specific who. I want Emily's full name. I want her age. I want where she works, where she lives. What, and that's what did I help her do? And again, specifics. And in the story I sent you about Emily's story, I could go much more specific. I was realizing it when I was reviewing it for this webinar. I could go much more specific on what, the what around her life. Um, that would make it more interesting. Um, and so basically, you pick your one story that you're going to work on, and you just get do research before you start writing and you figure out all the information about who, don't be vague, what, when, when did you help them, where, if it was online and how even, as you'll notice in my Emily story, I discussed that we met twice monthly, we did Skype calls, 
so we did it online, so I explained where we did our work, I, very specifically. And I explained why she contacted me, and how we worked together in detail, as you'll see in that story. If you haven't read it yet, you, you can do so after the webinar, and this will make much more sense. So, um, I had a point, and it just left my head. Hold on just a second. Oh, the how question at the very end is very important. In writing the story about Emily, I realized why I chose her. You're going to end up choosing the person who most represents your most active client. Uh, my most active clients are women, Between, although I do, I've actually got uh, as many men right now, but usually it's women, from the age of about 35 to the age of about 65, who um, have kids and full-time jobs and have always wanted to write a book. That's also in the Emily article I sent you. Um, and so you would also be looking to choose a story if you already own a business that is representative of your existing client base, of course, right? So I know that women who have small kids or teenage kids dying to finally be able to write a book that they've always wanted to write, don't want to go back to college, and I know they'll resonate with Emily's story. So again, it's a win-win thing. I love writing about Emily's story, and I love that there are people out there that I could help realize their dreams who I just want to say, yes, I'm here. And I want them to hear and see themselves in this story. So that's another issue you will be thinking about, about the story you choose. But of course you can write three or four different stories and use them in different capacities. Okay, so you've picked your story and you've done some research. Okay, you're just making lists now of the research. Now, this is the interesting one because it sounds like I'm saying go out and tell your story to your friends and listen to yourself tell it. And then I realized as I was developing this that is what I thought I meant, but it's not what I mean. Um, we've already told our most core stories out into the world. So if you're trying to figure out your calling and how it translates into a business, look at the stories that you tell again and again around work you've done in the world. I have told that Martha story 1,000 times. I was just in San Francisco and I told it again. How I said no. You know, ha, 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 right? <laughs> and then I was so broke I couldn't eat. And there she was. Um, it's just funny, right? But I tell that story so many times. So what you're looking for also within this process are stories you tell again and again and again. Um, and I tell um, Emily's story a lot because her imagination really excited me. And now what I'm noticing is I'm telling the expat writer in Zurich's story a lot. I think I've told it about 50 times so far and how it's helping me write fire. So that's what you're looking for too. It's the ones where you turn to your friend and say, oh, I'm working with this woman and she's this and that. That's where your personal mythology, your epic tale lies. If you tell, this is what I teach in all my courses for novel writing, script writing. If you tell a story again and again, there's a reason. And the reason has to do with your epic soul nature. And in it are so many clues to what you already are doing with your life and what you want to continue to do with your life and to get clearer and clearer on what that is, look at those stories you tell and retell. Align, and then be, get clearer and clearer, and just, I just actually do meditations and ask for, for more full alignment with, um, for me, this concept that I tell, that art of storytelling is all about, you are great, your story is great as it is, you are great who you are, Let's just go for it. I just ask for more and more alignment with that in meditation. That's the way I do alignment. So, 
When we pinpoint these stories and why we tell them, we can get to the core of what we really offer the world. And again, remember, it's something you do automatically since you were a kid. I remember when I was a little kid thinking everybody was just great as they are. And why do people not get that? Um, so it goes way back to who you are fundamentally. Okay, we're moving forward. Okay. Okay, so this is the big section, even though this is the briefest one written down. <laughs> this is the core thing. Um, this is, we're ahead of schedule. I'm looking at my clock here, and I can give you a bit of information on this. It's just um, hard, I'm much more a hands-on person. Um, than I am giving general lectures on writing a story, but we'll, we'll talk, talk you through how to do this. The method I use is a very classical sense of writing a feature article that I learned in journalism school and used for the thousands of articles that got published as a feature writer for newspapers. And you'll see with Emily's story that I follow this. Um, um, this method and basically, um, you open with a kind of compelling paragraph about the person's work with you, about what led them to you. Um, if you're not working with clients or you're working with, and you're working with more of a more of a like situations then you pick anything that leads in a compelling way into that situation so for Emily for example is when um, when she came to me she'd actually graduated from an MFA program and she'd had kids and just didn't have any time to write and I just find that is so true of all of us when we work full-time our soulful path gets pushed to the side. And that's why I liked it and started with it. Then you use the five W's. You explain what we were working on together, how we worked, where we worked, and get as specific as possible. Number two is be specific. It's through the generalities in storytelling that we lose the reader. And what you also would do would be to make sure you get quotes from the client or people in the situation. Um, the more professionally it's written, like a press release or a normal feature article, the more people tend to take it seriously. So, and the more, you know, the press release might not actually get picked up by a newspaper or uh, people just see a pro higher professional standard. So one of the techniques as well is to actually get direct quotes from the people. So you would want to interview the, the person or any person involved in the situation. And again, during the paid e-course, we talk more about how to do this. Like I said, it's very hard to generalize with this. But as long as you have all of the information, as long as you collect and gather all of the information that you need about the person, about the situation, how long you work together. As long as you get them to give you quotes on why they liked working with you, what they got out of it, why it was important to them, as long as you collect those quotes, and as long as you get all this information, it's just a matter then of arranging them in a compelling way to um, get an exciting article out of it um, that attracts and magnetizes people to you. And again, you've picked three different stories that come to you. You can do this on all three. One might not necessarily be more important than the other. So you can start by just doing all this research, collecting of information, get a photo of the person, make sure they're okay with privacy issues, um, what I tend to do, too, is after I gather all the information and I put it together, I tend to let them see it. Uh, you don't do this as a journalist. It's actually not thought of as um, the right thing to do. Um, 
it's not a professional courtesy that we offer people if because they can change it to best suit them and that's not the concept of fairness in journalism but this isn't journalism this is more public relations more PR so after I write the story I would actually have Emily approve it which she did um, and tweak it a little bit here and there and oftentimes what the client will do is improve upon it. They'll add more of their passion when they see how passionate you are and it will actually improve the article. So again, this is the kind of thing that we do at Art of Storytelling. So if you're interested in knowing more about how to write the story down, how to arrange it so that it's written like a professional feature, um, please contact us. And you can, we have the e-course coming up, but we also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay, so let's keep going. Now share your story. Okay, so what I have found, so I just wanted to share, of course share your story. This is so obvious, right? You would then put it out there. <laughs> of course, <laughs> you don't just keep it on your computer. But what I find really compelling about um, um, this concept is that I have noticed, and I haven't been keeping up my, my Art of Storytelling blog as much lately because I'm just so busy, but during a five to seven year period there, I had an extremely active blog, and it was a blog probably 80% of times that brought a new client to me, where if they were on the cusp of it, they would read my true soulful feelings about this or that, and it would really pull in the clients. And the more real I was about the work I did, the more pat, like just real, like this happened and that happened, the more I would really get clients. And I try to tell people this, and I find people are too shy to be really real um, out into the world. But I have to tell you, it has grown my business more than anything. So it really, you know, you will write it as a professional feature, and it will perhaps look odd on a blog because maybe it'll little be, uh, be a little bit formal, but you could introduce it, you know, that I've written this professional feature story about my work with Emily and I'm just like to share it on this blog. Um, of course, I put a tab on my website and I'm going to start doing featured, um, different writers featured in their story um, so that you could, people can come and read you know, different people's experience working with artist storytelling. And then, of course, there are press releases and there are services out there. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. I wrote it down and it's not in front of me. There's a service that you can pay to and they will send out the press release for you to different um, venues because things are changing so dramatically with the digital age and newspapers are failing and who knows even where to send press releases to newspapers anymore. I use one of those services, um, and I can't remember the name of it, sorry, um, because they will, they do all that research for you on where to send it. Um, but definitely the concept of storytelling we're talking about in this webinar is to that level. That So I've worked in newsrooms, and I'll tell you how it works. Basically, we're told, I was told, you know, told by my managing editor, okay, we don't have enough articles this week, go check the press releases. And I have a pile of them, and I look through till I think something sounds interesting enough to commission a reporter to, and a photographer to go, to go cover it. So they'll take yours, your story that you've written as a sort of uh, brochure about it, but then they cover the story themselves. So the story they end up publishing usually isn't your press release. If they do publish your press release, they're very, very, very lazy indeed. Um, and it's really not high-end journalism. Um, so basically, what we're talking about in establishing your story is the more aligned you are, the more authentic the story is. And then when you put it out into the world, it attracts the people who, when they come and work with you, create such a win-win situation that all of these doors fly open for you, for your work, uh, for new clients coming in. It's quite a profound connection. Okay, so um, I am talking a lot here, and there's a question. Okay, so I'm going to open the question, and um, 
coming up on my screen. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, thank you very much, um, Kirsten. Uh, PR Newswire, she has given me, given me the name of um, PR Newswire. Perfect, so that's there for everyone. Um, PR Newswire. Um, thank you, Kirsten. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so I have other questions here that were sent to me by email and from people who couldn't be at the webinar. So I'm going to answer a few of these. Please ask any more that you want while I'm going through this. We have about um, uh, 20 minutes. I can go a little slower through this webinar next time. <laughs> went a little fast because I didn't know how long it would last. Okay, so here's the first one. I run a landscaping business. That is so weird. Oh no, okay. I probably read that before. That's where I came up with landscaping. Okay, I run a landscaping business. That's so funny. Can you give me an example of a specific story? Yes. You would just truly, I'm talking about working with clients, one-on-one -on -one with people, but this can absolutely be applied to situations. I just talked about the landscaping one before. You would just pick an example of a very specific uh, situation that you worked on. Um, if you were hired by the city to do it, you would just explain that. Um, and again, looking at any privacy issues around it, you would want to be very clear about that. Um, or if it's a personal house, I had a friend in Seattle who was a really incredible landscaper. And he worked on this woman's house, invited me over to see it, and he basically had this way of bringing the outdoors inside. And that was his motto. Like he brought the outdoors in through landscaping and the deck and the windows and how the plants came up beside the deck. It was as if it came into the house. It was really magical. And he would just tell that story. And he would talk to the woman to ask if he could use photos. Um, and he could use her as, as an example. If she said no, then he would have to find something else. So, um, so yes, that's an easy one. Um, I was thinking about this too. Like, No matter if you do landscaping, you own a cafe, you're a writing coach, you're a life coach, whatever it is. The essence of what you bring, like for me, everyone is okay just as they are, could apply in many businesses. So no matter what business it is, the essence of what you bring, that uniqueness will shine through. So it's actually above, behind, beyond, above, the actual physical thing that you're called to do. Behind it is the essence of you. So you could be a teacher right, who uh, creates an uh, incredible environment of inclusion. But then you could be a landscaper who, run, who has staff who creates an incredible environment of inclusion. So I think no matter what you do, who you are is shining through in that. And that just needs to be in the story, what the essence of you and what you bring to that business. It just needs to be conveyed directly in the story. Okay, so um, the next question. I gave up a job in the human resources field to find myself, and two years have gone by, and I'd love to run my own business, but I can't figure out if I'm a coach or what I am. Can you help? <laughs> basically. Okay, so this is what I was trying to say earlier about looking back at situations when you were in HR and really thinking where you really felt moved with the work you did. And don't let anyone else tell you what it should be. You, so in other words, well I can't pick that story, that's stupid. No, it's not stupid. That's the exact story you should choose. Um, a lot of people think, well, when I look back and I think about it, I, wanna, I can't stop thinking about the time I did this small project, as if that small project is dismissible. Usually it's the small, sweeter things that, where your essence really lies. So what I would recommend for the HR person is to write down three examples of things that you did in HR that you're really proud of. Go back as many years as you can. 
and start to explore why you're proud of it and see and pick three events and see what the thread is that goes through all three and start with that and uh, the other thing I would say is if you think maybe you want to segue into being a life coach like if you're an HR this to this HR person just do it <laughs> just do it because you'll figure it out as you go so for me am I a teacher so I started teaching at the extension programs writing and yes I am but I'm not really good with big groups and I had to learn that by doing it because I'm so psychically open that all 30 people will enter my psyche for days afterwards so just I just couldn't function and make a living so when one-on-one -on -one coaching came along I'm a teacher one-on-one -on -one, and it works with my nature so same thing for you HR person uh, if you want to get certified as a life coach go for it and start coaching people you'll figure it out as you go the problem is I wouldn't think about it too much though because we can get stuck thinking and thinking and thinking it just the answer comes in the doing it's the same when I coach clients I'm writing a novel you can think about writing a novel it will not help you just have to sit down and put one word in front of another and that's the way you figure out your novel and that's what I would suggest to just do just be a coach <laughs> just do it um, there's so many inexpensive ways to set up these days um, that you don't even have to put a, a huge outlay of money to set your business up okay another question I have to keep my sessions private how can I tell a story of my business without invading someone's privacy well we talked about that but I'll I'll go ahead and answer directly again um, if you have to keep them private you have to keep them private we honor privacy of course <laughs> how are you going to increase your business if you break the very core essence of your your rules of privacy by writing about people so I would recommend uh, taking a snippet of different people's stories and creating a whole new story that's almost a fiction um, changing names and situations and places and um, writing it that way I know uh, there are coaches and life coaches who um, have done that but you may also find that one person who you used to work with and who's come out the other end and is feeling very successful is willing to talk about it. I would talk absolutely about it with the person who coached me and helped me get to where I am today if she wanted to. Um, and I would tell her what I wasn't comfortable with talking about, but I would be comfortable with talking about a lot enough to make a feature article. So you may be surprised. There may be someone out there who is willing. Okay, so we have another question two more three more questions I can think of a story from a long time ago but how would that really help me figure out my business well and again it's truly like um, it does take a while to figure it out I'll have to admit but if you start now you might as well start now right <laughs> and write that story from a long time ago and write three of them down and start to just look at why you're so proud of yourself and so happy with that phase of your life and really start to look at it what was it about me what was happening for me at the time what did I do for the person or in the situation that made me feel so good why um, and from that you can it'll start sinking in and yes it may not sink in today it may not sink in tomorrow but it will ultimately start to show you the direction that you need to go and I will tell you that my own um, I will tell you that my own um, path it did take a while to figure out even teaching the writing classes and not being very happy took a couple of years you know and that's minimum <laughs> Um, to start to figure out what the heck am I doing with my life so I would tell you to give it be gentle with yourself doing authentic work in the world is one of the biggest most important things you can do and if it takes a long time well it's because it's a big deal <laughs> you know we have generations of people just going 
and punching a clock at a job, a work that they didn't love, and there's a whole paradigm shift going on, and you're part of it, and it takes a while, and that's because there's not necessarily systematic and systemic support set up for people like us. But it's all changing, and many things are changing. With the financial crisis, there aren't even necessarily the corporate jobs to be had anyway. We're being forced into our authentic self, and you're part of a huge revolution in the world. That's the way I think of it when I'm having a hard day. Carrie, you're a revolutionary. <laughs> Keep going. So think of it that for yourself. Um, yes, and that will, you know, just know that it does take a bit, and you're fighting the good fight. And I'm all for you doing it. So I'm here supporting you and cheering you on. Okay. Uh, here's the next question, and then we have one more. How can I be sure I'm really aligned with my true path of service? <laughs> oh, this one makes me laugh till I cry. Only because you're absolutely right. You have to start wherever you are, and then go forward from there and you'll get clearer and clearer what that path of service is. So if you think, okay, I'll give you an example. When I was, um, I had a group of women friends in London who were all writers and they, most of them, I was like the one of two white people in this group of Jamaican and African women and um, I was just beside myself, not able to figure out what I was doing with my life. I was living in Seattle. I went for a year to London just trying to figure it out. Came back to Seattle just lost. And they recommended sitting down and writing a letter of intent. And just sit down and what do I love? And just write it down. What do I love? And all I could come up with that time was visual art and writing. At that time I wasn't a visual artist. <laughs> I just wrote down visual art. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny now because I'm such a fully fledged visual artist now. And at the time, I thought this is so hokey and crazy. And start wherever you're at is kind of what they taught me. So where I was at was I liked visual art and I was a writer and had been for years. And the moment I started writing it down, I was offered a job at an art institute teaching writing. Like truly, the moment I wrote it down, that's what came. So that was part of my path of aligning and honing my alignment, but I wasn't 100% there yet because I ha can't say I thoroughly enjoyed the job. I was teaching essay writing to kids who were artists who didn't really want to be there. I mean, I enjoyed it and I was good at it, but I didn't love it. Um, so start wherever you are. Sit down and write just some things you love. Use the exercises we talked about, about writing three stories down. Find the thread between them and just start right there. Um, and then um, it'll keep honing and honing. The reason I'm laughing is that I was just talking to a friend about how I really thought I was going to be a major international journalist for years. I was, but I thought I was going to be major. I, and then I just drop out because I know I want, don't want it anymore and I start writing novels and I'm like I'm sure I'm going to be this internationally famous novelist and now what's happening is becoming a visual, much more fully a visual artist so um, you just have to keep honing it and as you hone it it will change and you will change but you have to start wherever you are because we all, you know, have to go out into the world and do work and make money. So just start wherever you're at, is what I would say. And just keep being open to how it might shift and ebb and flow. Um, I'm, this is the last question. Good timing. I'm terrified if I follow my soul's calling, I'll be flat broke. I need to make a decent living. Okay. <laughs> I have five minutes to answer that one. Um, there is a great fear that comes up archetypally for a lot of people around that. I've worked with a lot of people around that and still do um, in my own coaching with people. Uh, such fear that stops them from doing what they love. And it's the saddest damn thing in the world. So um, I would just say honor 
that you feel the fear and that it's generations old and it's a collective feeling. It's not just yours, so you can do all the therapy you want. <laughs> I'd still be there a bit because it is a huge collective thing. Um, but many, many people are changing the paradigm right now. Um, many. And we're here and we're fighting the good fight. And basically, you may have to live a humbler living. You may have to not own as many cars or boogahs or <laughs> modern conveniences. You may have to be more budgeted, but the work is so fulfilling that in the end, um, you don't even think about it anymore. The work is just the thing and it's so fulfilling. So, um, but I would also say that some people who want to follow their calling and start a small business need to make sure they go step by step and not just quit their day job right now until they've come up with some kind of plan that segues them carefully from the old paradigm to the new of owning a small business. And there are a lot of small business seminars out there. The cities, uh, you know, the Small Business Association Administration gives these seminars out very cheaply. So I would, you know, you also have to follow the process practically to make sure you're setting up a viable business and have a business plan, all of that sort of stuff. But um, definitely it's worth it and definitely you can make a living. I didn't even know writing coaching was a thing when I became one. And I, you know, basically that's been my work now for 15, over 15 years. So it can be done. Let me just tell you that it can be done. So, okay, well, I don't see any more questions. That's all we have. I want to thank you all so much for being part of this webinar. And I am offering a four-week course starting at July 9th. It was supposed to be July 2nd, but it got pushed back a week. Um, four weeks where we actually look at writing one, you know, picking three story ideas, looking, I'll be very personally involved with you through this process, looking at what ties them together and why, what you actually offer, taking one of them, writing the article, and showing you all the writing techniques. We'll be using um, webinar technology as well where there'll be some face-to-face. -face. We're going to pull documents up on the screen and edit them and look at them together. It's very integrated, very one-on-one, -on -one, and I give you a lot of, between our weekly sessions, a lot of personal feedback. I'm really passionate about helping people do this kind of alignment and know how powerful storytelling can be to help people see what they're good at and spread it to the world. Okay, I'll be sending you an email with a recording and I'll send you an email if you want to register for that workshop and I will send you uh, many thanks as well for joining us and blessings upon your household and may you succeed beyond your wildest dreams in your business, in your work, and in your life. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye.